In the communities and ecosystems, we will be discussing about the biotic assemblages on a global scale. So that means we will be discussing that what are the large group of living organisms which can be divided on a globe. So a general classification of terrestrial and large scale ecosystem are called bio uh, biotic assemblages and the first based simply on vegetation and these are, were called formation. So as we have discussed earlier in the history of the biogeography that the first things that the ecologist or the, or, uh, the biologist they used to study was the formations that how different plants are distributed on the globe. But later the animal life included in descriptions and definitions and they are called in the modern biogeography as biomes. So uh, the Ronkiers uh, was a scientist who gave the concept of a life form among the plants. He was the first scientist to give that and he analyzed the flora of different parts of the world into component functional types and found that each region has its own distinctive biological spectrum. So he divided the globe into different parts and each of these parts having the different flora. So here you can see an idealized northern hemisphere continent showing the pattern of climate and bi biome types over its surface. So if we start from the zero degree that is equator, there is equatorial rainforest the first. As you go towards the pole, there is tropical summer rainforest, subtropical arid desert. There is the temperate continental grassland, Mediterranean forest shrubs, um, west coast temperate rainforest, east coast warm temperate forest and temperate forest. And then you have as you go further into the north, you would see the boreal forest and in very much north you will see the polar tundra. So this is an idealized northern hemisphere. Of course, this is not very much perfect because this is very generalized map, but it tells you that as you go from the equator to the pole regions, there are the different regions with the different sort of plants, different sort of climates. So each biome is said to be fit within a certain climatic envelope. So the biome is dependent upon the climate of the region and that is called climatic envelope. It starts, it ends and in there you will find your biome. So the sum of all climatic variables that limit that biome, you would find that particular biome in a particular geographical region where the climate remains the same. So this gives a refinement of conventional biome definitions particularly in case of forests and grasslands. So then there is Ian Woodward uh, in the uh, uh, University of Sheffield in UK. He proposed a classification of these vegetation types. So the, uh, then he gave the evergreen needle uh, leaf forest which are tall over 2 meter high, dense over 60 percent cover forest of evergreens with the narrow leaves, for example the boreal coniferous forests. And then there are the uh, evergreen broadleaf forests which are tall dense forest of evergreen trees with broad leaves and we, these are tropical rainforest. And then there are the deciduous needle forest which are tall dense forest of narrow leaf trees that seasonally lose their leaves uh, each, um, for example the large. And then there are the deciduous broadleaf forest which are tall dense forest of broadleaf trees that seasonally lose their leaves for example the beech, maple and some oaks and the fifth is the mixed forest which are tall dense forests with an intermixture of mosaic of deciduous and evergreen trees. So these are the five categories of the forest and in the next you will see the swanas um, which are woody swana which are having the trees which are more than two meter high cover only three, 30 to 60 percent of the land surface with the herbaceous vegetation and then there is simple swana which is containing the less number of trees. The trees are high and uh, uh, widely scattered covering only 10 to 30 percent of the surface, rest is herbaceous vegetation. And then there are the grasslands, uh, the land with the herbaceous cover and with less than 10 percent trees or sh uh, shrub covers and then there are the closed 
shrublands land with woody vegetation less than 2 meter tall and with the shrub cover evergreen or deciduous of more than 60 percent and the uh, last but not the least is the open shrubland land with the woody vegetation evergreen or deciduous and less than 2 meter tall and with the shrub cover of between 10 percent and 60 percent so uh, he gave ian uh, ian gave all of these classification of different type of plants and when uh, how what is the uh, function of all these that what is the objective advantage of it that all of these things can be recognized from the satellite image imagery so see that we have divided the whole globe into the some uh, formations and we call those formation as biomes and each biome give us some community of the plants and the organism animals or and all other type of organism which are dependent on it and those organisms are specific to that particular area